What's up YouTube? Welcome to part three, three of this how to design and code HTML emails. This will be the third and final video where we are going to add all of our code in here to create this beautiful email. So first things first, we need to get our logo in here. So um, wherever you've hosted your images, so I've hosted mine on Webflow, we will open up a new uh, window here and I'm going to go to Webflow because this is where I've hosted my images. You need to, if you've hosted yours on Dropbox or on your company server or whatever, just make sure you've got the links handy. Um, so if I come into my website here, I can just open up my assets panel on the left hand side. I'm going to need to bring this in a little bit. If I open up my assets panel here, I've got all of my images. So I need my logo, which I believe is this email logo. So I can click here. And here it is, so that will be my link for my logo email. So just make sure you've got those handy and ready to go. So back in Sublime Text here, we've written put your email content here. I'm going to delete that. So as we know, we have a table here and we have the opening of a body tag, close of a body tag, close of the table tag. So the first thing we need to do is open a row, a table row. So TR, we've opened it, and if we've opened something, we should close it. And it's always a good idea to sort of make sure that opening and closing tags are in line with each other. It's just going to save you um, a lot of hassle later. So if I press enter now, the next thing I need to put in is a cell <clears throat> and it will automatically indent that for me to help me keep it nice and neat. So then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to close the cell. And remember, it doesn't matter how many spaces you've got um, vertically any line breaks and stuff but it's just for your own visual um, reference I like to do mine like this and now we can put in whatever we want here so we're gonna put in an image but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label this so I'm gonna write it like this logo block like that and then that's just our label so we know what we're doing here and then I'm gonna give this cell a class so Inside the tag, I'm going to put a space, I'm going to write class, and I'm going to call it logo. So this just means that our mobile styles at the top here, it's going to reference this, so the padding will change when we get down onto a mobile view. Um, so I've got the class here, I'm going to align this cell. Press enter, I'm going to align it to the left. I'm going to give it a background color of, we want it to be this nice green here. So I can just come here and remember we left the hashtags in here earlier. We do need those. So I'm going to copy that, come back to Sublime Text and paste. And then I'm going to give it some styling. So we write style and then I'm going to give it padding top. So we always start our padding at the top. We go top, right, bottom, left. So I'm going to give it padding top 20 pixels, I think. Let's just check our design. So yeah, we've got 20 at the top and then 50 at the sides, 20 at the bottom. So we just come in here, we go padding top 20, padding right 50, padding bottom 20, padding left 50. Always finish, finish with a semicolon. And then we are going to open an image tag. So after, so this is all of the, this, basically everything we've put inside this cell. So we've got a cell and we've told it it's going to have all of these properties. And then we sort of close that opening cell tag. So all we've done is added inside that tag. And then what we're going to put inside, we could do it here for to make it visually easier to see. We're going to have an image. So we just write image and it's already come up image source and then that is where we grab our image source here paste that in there um, and then we need to give this image some style so we just need to say how big it is so we need to put that inside the tag so we just come inside the tag push space and we are going to give it a I think we're going to give it a width let's have a look yeah let's give it a width of 50 and set its height to be automatic so we just write width 50 height auto and then we need to give it some alt text um, and I'm going to call this TP logo now alt text if you don't know alternate text is for sort of screen readers so if somebody's visually impaired 
they can't see their screen they'll have a screen reader and it'll read out what's happening on the page so when you have an image it will explain what's in the image so this will just read out TP logo and then it will read the next part text um, so don't go to town on those descriptions just a nice short little description is fine so if we save this and if we come here let's have a look and there we go easy peasy and because we've already set this cell so this whole green part is a cell now we've already set this to be have its logo class where the padding changes so it should get 30 pixels on the left so you should see it jump there it goes so now it has less padding at the sides if we pull it back out we can see it snaps in a little bit and we still have it's quite difficult to see because of this gray color but you can see we've still got our left and right spacer cells working so that's that easy peasy so same again let's add in this image so let's come back to wherever we've hosted our images so here's my one here my email header and all I'm going to do now that we've got one cell set up I'm going to copy this whole thing come down give it a little space so I can see I'm going to call this hero image that makes sense to me I'm going to give it a class of probably mobile full width and see my classes are coming up because we've already written them up the top there that's why I love sublime text if I just come back up here let's have a look we've got mobile full width so it's just going to ensure that it stays at 100 percent of the width that's the one we want um, we're going to give it a background color let's give it a background color of this lighter green that it actually has which would be let's just grab this have a look it's a slightly lighter green there and this is just so if if the image doesn't load or if somebody's got their images turned off it will just show a block with this color in it or whilst the image is loading you'll see this color so it makes sense to have the sort of the same background color that your image has we don't need any padding on this so we can actually just remove this whole style part we can just delete that image source we need to come up here and change that so we just copy that one in we're gonna paste it in there and we're gonna say width 100% and the alt text I'm gonna say these are floating icons if we save this and come back to our email and refresh there it is and it should stay the correct width as we knock it down look at that perfect and we can of course always press control and click or right click and get into our inspect and just check and make sure it's all looking pretty good here so I'm quite happy with that see how easy this is so once you've got one just copy and paste as we go down so what do we have next after hero image we've got sort of our little header section which we'll do in three rows so we'll do a row for the h1 one for the h2 and one for the button so let's do the H1 now. Um, if we come back to Sublime Text here, let's copy this again. Keep it all nice and neat. So this is going to be our H1. So make sure you label stuff as you go. And this class, it's not mobile full width, it's going to be class H1. And I think, did I do it with a capital? No, I've done it with a lowercase. So it is case sensitive here so do lowercase and we want it aligned to the left the background color this time is going to be white and we do actually need some padding so I'm just going to copy this part of the style here paste it inside our tag and we want padding I know we want padding 50 at the top 50 at the right I'm going to put zero at the bottom or am I no I'm going to keep 20 padding on the bottom 50 at the left so let's just have a look so we've got 50 at the top, 50 at left and right, 20 at the bottom. This is my text, so I'm just going to copy this in here for now. So rather than having an image, we can delete the image. We can paste in our text. And then at the moment, we haven't told this text to be any sort of style. So all it's going to do is it's going to inherit this style here from the body. So it's going to be in Lato um, and it's going to be 16 and line height 24 so we need to overwrite that so within this style we can say font size and we come back here and we can just double check so it's 36 with line height 43 
So we come in here, font size 36 px, semicolon, line height. As soon as you start typing, it will come up 43 px. We want to change. Uh, we want the font weight to be bold. So font weight, we know 700 is our bold. And then color, we just start writing color. And um, if you're American, this is great. If you're English, uh, you need to make sure you do it with the American spelling. You putting a U in there will not work. So color. We come in here and let's just grab our rich black from here, paste it in there, finish it with a semicolon, making sure the inverted commas are there and the close tag is there. And I think that in theory should work. So we saved it. We come here. Something's gone slightly wrong. So you see that's a little bit yellow. Let's have a look. So background color. One, one, two, three, one, two. I've put in seven F's, I think. Yeah, so let's make that six. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Um, one thing that we haven't done, I think, is class. No, we did do class. So it's got a class of H1, so let's just check what's going to happen. So the font size of 36, so it stays the same, but the line height will increase slightly, and the padding on the left and right and the top will drop to 30, and the one on the bottom will remain at 20, because we haven't told it to do anything else. So let's just have a look, refresh this, drag our window in, and there we go, it's looking pretty good, it's all working nice and easy. So all we need to do now to get our H2 copy this h1, paste it down, let's label it up as h2, let's give it the class of h2, it remains aligned to the left with the same background color, the style, we don't have any padding at the top, so we put padding top zero, we keep the left and the right the same, we actually keep the padding at the bottom the same, I think, just having a look at my design, and da, 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 my h2 padding at the bottom, Right, let's have a look. Let's just double check. Yeah, we want 20 pixels at the bottom, right? Yeah, okay, right, let's keep 20 at the bottom. Here we go, and let's get our text. Copy that in there. Paste it in here. And then all we need to do is adjust our font sizes. So we know it needs to be 18 with 27. So we come in here, font size 18, line height. 27 and it's still bold but the color is the green so we just come here copy this green code and paste it in there and this should work easy peasy and we always just double check responsiveness yep it's looking great and you see how easy this is guys you just copy and paste as you go down okay now what I'm gonna do is I've got one that I've already coded. Here's one I made earlier of a button. So I'm just going to bring this in and paste this in here and show you what's going on. So I've labeled it up as call to action. And as you can see, there's a row and then a cell. So the cell, we're, we're sort of having a wrapper for our button. So we've just got sort of the white part behind the button. So we're, we're bringing in a cell that is essentially like this behind our button, right? and then we're putting our button inside and the button is going to be a table itself so we have a row with a cell and that cell is called call to action wrap which we have up here and all we've done on this like with the other things is just adjusted its padding for the mobile view and then the call to action wrapper has a background color of white it's aligned to the left it's got its padding rules here and then inside that cell we have a table so we start a new table for our button aligned to the left it doesn't have any padding or anything like this and then inside that table there's a row and a cell and then this cell is called the call to action and this will be the actual small green button so we have one cell containing it and then a table and then this is the cell that we're styling to become the button and here oh undo that we've given this a class of call to action let's see what happens on mobile with that we haven't set anything on this, but if we wanted to, we could. Um, it's always good to give things a class anyway. Um, align it to the left. It's got a border radius of zero, so that means it's going to be square. If I were to write 20 in here or something, it would have rounded corners. Um, padding at the top, 15. So 15 top and bottom, 20 left and right. So if you remember in here, we have 
So you can see that 15 top and bottom, 20 left and right. So that makes sense. What else do we have in here? Background color of the green. And then it has an A tag, which I don't think we've been through yet. So an A tag is um, a link tag, basically. So it starts like this. If I were to bump this down so you can see it, we have A href equals, and then in quotation marks, I think my iPad is trying to talk to me somewhere, um, we put the link of where we want this to go. So at the moment I want this to go to my website in the contact page, so I just pasted that in there. Target equals blank tells that this link should open in a new window. Um, that's always good practice to do because if somebody's looking at this in the browser and then they click on your link, <clears throat> then your email's disappeared and they might have wanted to see the rest of the content or you might be trying to sell them something further down. So always make sure things open in a new link. Um, and then we're just styling um, the link basically so we're saying it should be white it should be 16 font size it should be bold it should be text aligned center this time text decoration none so text decoration would be if you wanted it to have an underline or strike through you could write that here um, we're just repeating the border radius for safety zero and display inline block just leave all of this as it is and then in here is where we put our text so we could bump that down onto another line so that's easier for you guys to see hopefully that all makes sense and then we're closing this cell here we're closing this row here we're closing this table here we close the containing cell here and the whole containing row here and then if we save this and refresh here there's our button easy and now there are tons of ways to make buttons um, if you head over to litmus.com I think it is and you can they've got loads of guides on creating bulletproof buttons so buttons that won't break because there's a lot of different ways to make buttons and a lot of time they break or, or you know they can't be seen or the text disappears and stuff like this it's quite confusing um, I've done tons of different ways of doing this in the past this is my favorite way it makes the most sense it seems to work everywhere for me um, but you're welcome to obviously try new ways but you're also welcome to just take this code and use it yourself now as we've given this a class of call to action and I said we didn't have any styles we don't have any mobile styles for it but if we come up here if you remember our button hover color change we have it here so it's referencing our CTA here and on hover the background color is going to change to this light green that we set up earlier so if we have a look here if I hover over it's very subtle but it is changing color and that's just a nice to have. So we're doing good so far hopefully you're all with me. Next up we need to add in a para bit of paragraph text and then we're going to add in these blocks and I'll just do one block and then we'll just copy and paste them and you could change the content if you want but nobody needs to sit here and watch me copy and paste all that text. So we need to get this paragraph in now. So. I would come back here, scroll down, and let's take our H2 to copy from. We come down underneath the end of our row for our button, and let's label this one up as paragraph. And we're going to give this a class of P, lowercase p, which we've already set at the top. And we want to keep this padding, I believe, to be 0, 50, 50, 50. So let's have a look. 0, 50, and we want padding at the bottom 50, left 50, because we know down here it's going to have 50 pixels, whereas we took it from this one, so it was already set at 20, so we just need to change that. And the font size is 18 at the moment, so it's currently set up as our H2. So what we could do, we could either rewrite our paragraph style in here, or we could actually just remove all of this because it's going to inherit our default from here. So let's just grab our text, let's see if this works. Copy it from there and paste it into here. Let's save and refresh. And there we go, it's taken the correct style. And it's got this nice amount of padding, that's exactly what we want. But you might notice that there's no line break, where here it looks like there should be a line break. So let's just tab this in. So adding those tabs won't tab it across in your email or anything like that. But what we need to do is we actually need to write the code for a line break here, which is just a BR. And you don't need to close that tag. 
it's just a tag by itself. So I'm going to put two BRs in next to each other and that knocks it down by two lines. So it knocked it from one BR, knocks it to there, the second one knocks it down again. So now we need to go through adding our next sections, but I mean from here that's pretty much, you could have an email that just works like this, you know, you could add in another full width image and you can just keep adding paragraphs and buttons and headers and things like that just by copy and pasting these things and adjusting your padding. But if you do want to keep following along, we're now going to make these number blocks which are just ever so slightly more complicated because we have one thing next to next to the other a good way to do this kind of stuff for safety would be to design it you know something like that everything stacked on top of one another is the easiest way to go but as you can see that just looks a little bit boring we've got the skills so we can do it so let's have a look so we've got a number in a block so this will be probably a table um, with some padding and stuff, let's have a look how did I do it. I've got my other email open here. So if I copy, I'm just going to copy this in and when we can talk through how it was made. So if I paste this in here, right, we've got number one. And then this is split into two parts. So up here we have the number and the header. So that's the two bits side by side. And then we just have a regular bit of paragraph underneath. So obviously we open with a row and then a cell and then like we had with the call to action wrap we have a number wrapper first so the number wrapper is aligned to the left with a white background and it's got padding left and right 50 padding bottom 20 okay so that is basically saying left and right is going to have 50 and then at the bottom it's just making sure that we've got this 20 pixels of padding here and then let's have a look what have we got to the right hand side of it okay so inside here we've got a table and then we know when we open a table we need a table body and then a table row and if you have a look this row closes here so this is the first time we have two cells so we have one cell in the table for the number and then one cell for the number header and then all we do to get these to work side by side we just give this one a display class of inline block so display setting of inline block and that just means if it was set to display block it would take up all of the available space to it but inline block it will only take up what it's what we're telling it to take up and it will allow whatever's coming next to sit next to it so we have two classes two cells and we just make sure the first one is set to inline block so we've got a class of number we're telling it to be 50 pixels wide 50 pixels high with a green background we're giving it a small amount of padding five on each side we're telling it to be in this h1 style that we've already set up so we're just saying it should be font size 36 line height 44 font weight 700 align the text to the center and be white and then we've just put a number one in there so we could put you know anything in there um so let's just have a look at what this looks like so here it is, there's the one and that is HTML text so it's not an image which is brilliant um, so if let's just say for example we could put more text in here and it would see how it's not expanding out see it's hidden down there that's because we told its containing cell to be 50 pixels wide so this number wrap at the top Oh no, sorry, the actual cell itself we've told to be 50 by 50, so we won't be able to fit anything else in there. But that's good, leave it like that. You could, of course, remove the width and the height here. Let's see what happens when you do this. It's always good to just sort of mess around and see what happens. You can always undo. This is sort of how you learn. There we go, so now it works because we've removed its restrictions. And then it doesn't have that much padding, so if you wanted to, you could um, adjust the amount of padding. So on the left, let's have 25, and on the right, let's have 25. Save that, and there you go, that's how you'd get something looking like that. But let's undo all of that. Let's make sure we've got our width and our height set and number one there and then the second cell we've just given it a class of number header it's aligning to the left it's got padding on the right and on the left it has 20 that's just to make sure we can knock knock it out by 20 there 
hopefully that makes sense and then we've just told it what style it needs to be close the cell close that row that contains both the cells and then obviously we need to close the body close the table close the cell close the row and then underneath we just have a regular paragraph as per above and that's all we need to do so then we would just copy this whole block come down here and we would paste it there we go three more times and if we come in here here we go we've got it all set up there and let's just check its responsiveness it all looks great see how easy that is and then you could just go through come in so we've called this first one should be number one so then we come down and we just let change our labels number two this is going to help us make sure you keep your labeling up to date three and then not finally number four here if we save that and refresh we now have one two three four and at a later date when we've got time we can just go in and paste in that text or we could let our copywriter in here and say just write over the white text or you can do it you know easy peasy that's all done so nearly there we just need a little sign off a button and then the social icons and the unsubscribe so that's easy so we know we just need to get in a paragraph at the bottom now so I'm just checking how I wrote this code before it's just a regular paragraph I'll just copy it in here so you can see what we did we don't need Figma open so we want to stay in here new row paragraph as above class P aligned to the left we've got our padding hope to hear from you soon and again we've used the line break code which is BR twice to knock that down let's have a look I've actually put in the wrong paragraph there there should be a paragraph above there's another paragraph here so we just need another paragraph which says all of this stuff and then we need to repeat our call to action so we can just come up here we've already done all of the hard work we've got the code here we copy this come down paste it between our two paragraphs and let's have a look what's going on now see how easy this is it's already rolling over it's already going to link to the correct place which is the contact form of my website easy so last but not least we have the social icons now I quite often tell people to remove social icons from their emails it depends what you want your email campaign to be doing with mine at the moment this is more of an awareness thing to sort of get my business out there and you know I don't have many followers on Dribble or Instagram or Facebook and um, I've got like five subscribers on YouTube so for me this is a good idea for me to add this stuff in you know if you're working with a company that has 500 million followers perhaps you don't need to put this stuff in because the problem is if somebody scrolls down they're like oh yeah I'll follow you on Facebook they click Facebook they see a picture of a cat and you have just lost them okay they're gone right and actually you wanted them to be buying something through your website so you don't want to distract them too much so it's sort of up to you on the marketing team and stuff how you decide that but for now we're gonna put them in so I've already coded this elsewhere so I'll bring it in and then I'll show you how we did it it's very simple it's just a table row with some padding and then five cells so here we go it's labeled as footer it's a table row with a cell so this is sort of the green block so we're telling it to align to the left it's got the green background color and it's padding we have we don't have padding at the top and the bottom we have it at the left and the right and then we have our vertical padding is included on these cells so inside the the main containing cell we have a table just like we did with our call to action just like we did with those number blocks and then we have obviously a body and then another row and then this row would be this row in here can't select it this row here so we've got one row and then inside that row we have a table and then this table has a body then a row 
and then that is this row and then each of these icons is going to be a cell itself so if we come in here and have a look we open the cell and then in the cell all we're doing is putting a link so we start with the link and we're telling this link to go to dribble target blank as we did before so it will open in a new tab and then that link is attached to an image so you can see here image source and then we've just put in where we've uploaded our image so this is where I've got my dribble icon from my webflow account this time I'm setting the width to be auto and the height to be 24 rather than giving the height a property and the width to be automatic because if we have a look in here we want all of their heights to be the same but this YouTube logo is slightly wider so this is 34 whereas all of the others are square they're all 24 by 24 so if we just set the height as 24 and the width to be auto it won't skew this one and then what else do we have on here we've got the padding so we open our style here this is all of our style settings so we've got padding at the top and we've got padding at the right padding at the bottom but no padding on the left so because on the left we've already set this container to have 50 pixels padding then we're setting this icon to have 25 at the top and the bottom and 15 to the right I know m my numbers are slightly different here but sort of once you make it you can adjust them so each of them has padding to the right so even this LinkedIn one does but it just won't affect anything because there's empty space to the right um, it's got a display of inline block so like we did before if these weren't set to inline block they would just be stacked underneath one another so we set inline block and it just allows them to sit in line with each other we've given them a class of social icon and we've given them some alt text to just say what they are so if we come back up to our classes maybe we have something called social icon maybe we don't let's have a look no we don't but if we wanted these to behave differently on mobile we could just come in here and write a new class and we would just write social icon curly square brackets and then we would write whatever we want to happen in here so maybe we would want their padding to increase so we'd go padding top 50 pixels and then space and then we write exclamation mark import and we finish with a semicolon like that and then we could just copy and paste that Oops. copy and paste this and we could add as many properties as we want to these social icons that's fine and that's just how you add new classes but we already knew that so if we come back down to the bottom as you can see here all I've done is we've got one cell made sure it's worked tested it and then copy and pasted it replaced the target for the link um, and replaced the target for the image and replaced the alt text and then as usual we've closed that row so that's that inner row we've closed the body we've closed the containing table then we've closed the containing cell and the containing row if we save that come back to Chrome we can have a look here it is so if I clicked on dribble for example there you go it's open my dribble page just double check let's click on YouTube and that's linked to the YouTube page so that all works so there's only one thing left to do which is adding in our unsubscribe link now unsubscribe links work differently um, across different email service providers different sending platforms and things like that I'm currently with MailerLite so whoever you're with you just kind of have a look in their guidelines and they'll give you a code for how to code this unsubscribe link so this is how I've done mine I just bring this in from my other document so I've labeled it up as usual and it's just a row with a cell and then we've just put some text in and styled that text um, and so let's have a look we've got a class of unsubscribe just because we're telling in our um, media queries we're deciding that it's going to have less padding on mobile so line to the left it's got a slightly different background color this time because if we come back to our design here you can see it sort of looks like it's sitting outside of the body of the email that's because we don't really want people to be we don't want to be drawing attention to the unsubscribe link it needs to be visible and it needs to be clear which it is it's got a lot of space around it it's perfectly legible but we don't really want it to be part of our main design so that's why I'm making it appear as if it's outside the email by coding the background to be the same color as we coded these spacer cells at the side and it's in a slightly smaller font let's have a look what we've done we've just got some padding we've got a background color we've changed the font size and the line height and the font weight it's aligned to the left 
it's got a text color if you'd like to unsubscribe you can do so and then we're opening a link here so an a tag is a link we've given this a class of apple links gray so if you remember before we were saying on the mobile this is going to well on an apple mobile this is going to appear bright blue and underlined so we don't want it to be bright blue so we give it this apple class here and it's going to overwrite it to be gray we're telling it that we do want the underline because we want it to appear as a link I think for legal reasons you do have to have it underlined but don't quote me on that um, we're just reiterating the color here to try and force it and then we've got our href which is the target for our link and then this is the part of code that I got from MailerLite you would insert whatever code you get from your platform here and then inside here is where we write the text that we want to actually be linked closing the link here so forward slash a close the cell close the row save let's refresh and have a look and there we go you can see our cursor changes as we hover over so that's it so that's the full email built if we press uh, control or right click and inspect let's just have a look see what it looks like on an iPhone so we can see that all of our padding at the left and the right has dropped down to 30 so that looks nice and neat um, and here's where if we wanted to make any changes we could come back to our media queries and we could say actually for example the paragraph let's see what happens if we change the paragraph so we scroll up to our media queries p and we could if we wanted to increase the font size of the paragraph this is going to be quite amusing but just so you can see and then on mobile our paragraphs bigger and when we come out of mobile it's regular so you'll see it snap as we drag the window in there you go so there's all there's a million different things you can do here so just have a play around with it you've got this as a template so like I said before I'm gonna put this fully coded email as a link in the description as well so you have the empty starting template and then you have the fully coded email so if anything goes wrong you can refer to this one that's already got the code in that's no problem and I think we've covered everything so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it please like the video please subscribe and I will see you in the next one